Okay. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Steve Menser. I'm Vice President of uh, Sales and Marketing at Acronix. Uh, normally, Quinn Jacobson would be here to give this presentation, uh, but he couldn't make it, and I was here in Europe, so uh, I'm going to help out here in this regard. So um, I'm going to talk about the uh, proof of concept that you've heard about today and go through some details. Um, before I do, I'm going to give you my perspective from a, a non-engineering point of view, I'll give it to you from a marketing and sales point of view. Um, this is really interesting stuff. So uh, we as a company have been uh, talking about chiplets for a while, but it's hard because it's without a standard. Um, it is custom solutions, and that essentially means it's not economic, or you have to be a very large size. And so we know uh, companies have done this, uh, Intel, NVIDIA, uh, AMD, Xilinx, but they have the, the uh, very large economic wherewithal to drive um, the technology. What this is um, potentially going to enable is where a lot of innovation can happen because certain companies just don't have the ability to drive the, the economics themselves, but they have really interesting technology that will add value to uh, the overall marketplace. So, uh, so I'm excited about this. Um, all right, in terms of the subcommittee here, uh, the, the vision for the POC is ultimately um, to incentivize or create a marketplace for uh, chiplets. And so the mission is to go through and do a demonstration to actually deploy technology to show uh, how this would work. Um, not so much from the technology point of view, you've heard other discussions on, on that, but more about what is the workflow? What is the software? What, how will the companies interact together so ultimately a solution can be built um, so there are uh, multiple uh, dimensions that are being looked at. First of all, from an operational point of view. Um, so, so again, the, the thing to emphasize is it's not just uh, what are the protocols to have chiplets talk about. It's really more about how do companies work together within protocols so that they can create solutions that ultimately uh, will be viable in the open marketplace. So from an operational point of view, there's a lot of details in terms of information uh, sharing and it, you know, ultimately how uh, the um, business models will work, how the interactions will work, how data will be shared. Um, of course, architectures um, are very important. Um, you heard Dave talk about this. Uh, there's a lot of aspects about um, ultimately um, at the technology level. Um, and then um, workflows, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more about workflows um, subsequently here. So in terms of the vision to uh, build a deployment, um, the, the end goal is ultimately go through a, a, a full test case, demonstrate um, how uh, the steps were done. So that's to create uh, the end product and ultimately an ecosystem with uh, folks that are involved in the ODSA. But if you go up to the top level, um, there are a couple of aspects that had to be kind of contemplated. First of all, uh, you know, we talked about workflow operations. Uh, there's a software aspect. So after we get a, you know, a chiplet solution, a, a multi-package solution together, uh, there needs to be a software stack on top of that to run. Uh, and one of the goals was to, um, to really focus within the the microcosm or the ecosystem, try to get some companies that are already very involved or very interested in this to build a solution to uh, demonstrate that this is, is possible. Um, I'm going to go through the steps, the sequence, because going jumping right into a packaged uh, chiplet solution uh, would be complex, uh, would be expensive, and I think it would go against uh, some of the goals that the organization had set up. So uh, a couple more on objectives. So the, the workflow objective is to do the discovery process for how multiple companies will work together to create the end solution. Uh, it's, it's ultimately a pipe cleaning. So after this is done, uh, and the, as the um, standards are set and this has been implemented, then the idea is that people can copy quickly. They can be essentially fast followers and deploy technology following uh, steps that have been proven out. Um, it's, the goal is also, of course, to um, attract more 
uh, folks into the ecosystem by showing that, you know, number one, it's been done. Number two, here's how you can do it for um, an economical or do an economical implement, implementation. So when the committee got together, uh, they brainstormed early on uh, about what should be done to demonstrate functionality. Uh, and there are a lot of options, but essentially focusing on acceleration, um, some type of uh, software or hardware acceleration. Um, so the, the, the original architecture is largely stayed intact, hasn't changed. Um, so basically some type of uh, connectivity to the outside world, um, some uh, connection to a host processor, uh, storage for, you know, obviously um, the storage is required to do any type of complex function. And then inside, different types of uh, chip, chip solutions that, um, you know, ultimately can create an accelerator type of solution. And I'll go through more details. One of the goals was to uh, not try to invent too many things um, all at the same time. So uh, an agreement early on was using legacy technology. Let's use technologies that exist today so that, uh, so it's easy to demonstrate functionality, but by putting them together, we can also easily demonstrate uh, enhanced capability. So uh, stick with le legacy functionality, but um, add value uh, ultimately in terms of the implementation. So, you know, and I've talked a little bit about the, the microcosm of the ecosystem. The goal is ultimately by going through this flow is that we start identifying and enabling chiplet suppliers, which is obviously the critical starting point, but it's not the end. There needs to be chiplet integrators. Uh, there needs to be software stacks, software solutions, and system builders. Uh, the goal is this: the goal of the committee is not to solve some of the problems uh, like uh, Dave was talking about, some of the link layers, some of the file layers, uh, some of the, um, the technical details. It's to show that by putting these things together, you can prove out the concept of uh, multi-product, uh, multi-die uh, solutions. Um, and as uh, was described here, uh, the, the vision or the, the thought was, let's start with packaged products. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially make little tiny PCBs. And that'll be kind of the equivalent or analogy of a chiplet. And then let's build a bigger PCB, and that'll be the analogy of the substrate. And by doing that, essentially, we could build, using standard processes, the, the multi-chip solution, and then move from there to a um, multi-die solution. So here's the architecture. Um, essentially, you know, three different chips, as I, th I showed before, all with acceleration type of functionality. So there needs to be networking between all of the, the chips. Uh, and then we need to have the ability to have data streamed in from you know, QSP, QSFP uh, connectors. We need to have a um, PCI Express link for the host processor and then some type of uh, communication to um, outside memory. From a configuration point of view, this was the architecture that was put together. So one of the goals um, was modularity. So the idea that any of these pitchlets can be put into any socket um, so that it wasn't basically hard-coded to that solution, but that new pitchlets could be made. So even before we go off and do uh, a, a full package integrated um, uh, implementation, that other companies could actually jump on this platform and build solutions. So the, the sockets, um, A, B, and C, have all the same structure, all the same interface, and then we have the ability to um, move different of these pitchlets around. The companies that are uh, building the first implementation are uh, Netronome for a network flow processor, um, an Acronix FPGA, and an NXP um, uh, ARM-based uh, CPU complex. Um, again, you know, these, these are the ones that are, make sense to start off with. We're completely open. Um, when you look at the different implementations, none of the vendors fully encompass all of the functionality for the sockets, but all of the vendors take advantage of a subset um, of the socket capability. So that, in other words, they could fit into the socket and they could add value to the overall system. 
So some examples, uh, you know, one of the first Envision applications is Smart NIC. This is very interesting technology for, um, again, either software or hardware acceleration. So um, this is a bump in the wire where you can see the, uh, the data plane data flowing into the FPGA, uh, then ultimately going through the, the network flow processor and uh, the CPU for doing the control functionality. Very similar is a sidecar where the data is going to the uh, NFP and ultimately the FPGA is um, at the uh, control plane doing acceleration uh, with the CPU complex. Okay, so uh, interoperable. Uh, we don't have to, we can move it so we could have the CPU in socket A. Uh, this is a computational storage doing, uh, let's say you want to do some type of compression, encryption, database acceleration. In this case, now you're going to have your data streaming in to your CPU and you're going to have your FPGAs be um, the layer before the storage and you're going to be doing one of those functions uh, before the data gets stored or received. Uh, this is a picture. Oh. Show it. Have you guys already shown this? Nope. Uh, so I have a picture of this on my computer. I was trying to bring it up. I didn't have enough time. But this is a, a done deal. So that was a depiction here. This is a, a better implementation. So you can see, again, the, the large PCB is the substrate. And uh, these are three examples of pitchlets. And actually the real thing? It's the real thing. OK, so right. It will work. <laughs> it just doesn't work yet. So uh, I, I talked about this already, but uh, this is the implementation for the uh, NFP, the FPGA, and the CPU complex in terms of the, the connectivity in the outside world. But again, the key is that from a socket point of view, uh, they conform to the, um, the protocol. So again, they can be put into any, any one of these socket locations. Uh, in terms of the development, to go from it doesn't work yet to um, it is working, there's, there's still a fair amount of work that has to be done. So at the software level, each one of each socket um, has independent software that enables the, their, their own technology. Um, and, and that's largely done. What still has to be developed is kind of the middleware, the, the communication uh, between the, the pitchlets and then ultimately the chiplets um, and the drivers and so forth so that it becomes an end solution. But very importantly, um, and this is a request for more participation, is the software on top. So once you have a very powerful um, even though it's not in a chiplet or not in a single package form, you have this um, PCB here that could be a, a smart NIC, again, computational um, or intelligent uh, computation. Um, so now we got to put the software on top so folks can create applications that actually uh, show value, show uh, usefulness of the functionality. So we are looking for help there um, and uh, people to contribute and participate at the uh, software level. From a development point of view, uh, started, I mean, this is pretty fast, pretty, pretty impressive, uh, a lot of hard work. Um, as Quinn likes to point out, uh, these are volunteers. Uh, there's a lot of you know, uh, company commitment in terms of these folks you know, spending their time to uh, make this happen in terms of a physical implementation, and pretty quickly. So uh, my understanding is it started at the beginning of the year, and you can see already we have the PCB um, already developed. So uh, a lot of good work um, that came along very quickly. And then, uh, you know, again, um, from a, a request point of view, there's much more work that has to be done. Um, so the committee is looking for help from an engineering point of view, some in-kind development, uh, folks that can uh, help um, in terms of the development that I described, as well as funds. Uh, there's been hundreds of thousands of dollars invested and in, uh, probably thousands of man years invested and uh, more work, work has to be done. So any help that can be um, uh, given uh, would be very beneficial. So you know, here's a whole list of things that the committee is looking for. Uh, I'll let you peruse through those. Uh, I'll circle back to the beginning here. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Um, you know, uh, I'm on the front line here talking about these conversations. And uh, I think 
if I could take a second. We're kind of uh, back in a new renaissance for semiconductors. Uh, so semiconductors had its heyday, Silicon Valley, uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of growth. Then kind of hit a point of maturity. You saw a lot more activity on the software domain, and um, you can see that through um, uh, stock valuations and so forth. But there's a couple of technologies that are really creating this energy, um, 5G, autonomous driving, and uh, AI. So you look at this and you see huge valuations for little tiny companies. Well, there's going to be a lot of technology, obviously the winners and losers, but there's going to be a lot of new technology. And some of that technology is really going to have to be deployed uh, through this type of joint single package solutions. So this is a very important uh, type of technology. So I ask anybody that has any interest to uh, participate, please do so. Uh, we would welcome, uh, you welcome your involvement. Any questions? So, um, Bapi, if I could ask you to respond to that. Sure. So, A, if you go back one slide. This one? No, 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 the one to the software. Oh, yeah, it's back a couple. Here yeah, we go. So, um, what we, we need, after sort of noodling on it, we thought we needed two kinds of software. One is like application specific stuff, and the second is some kind of middleware. And what we need is a real bar. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.